So can the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus with the Intel Atom CPUs, the C3758s at 2.2 gigahertz with eight cores, can that run Plex at 4K? Can it do any transcoding? Can it do on the fly transcoding down to maybe a lower resolution? Short answer is yes, and we're gonna get into the details of it. So uh, too long, didn't watch. Yes, uh, you can stop watching here if that's the only thing you wanted to know. I'm not a clickbait person. We'll make you watch a longer video. I will just tell you up front that it will do it. But let's talk about the details and some of the limitations and just how fast it will do it and just how many 4K streams we can run. And it, we'll get into that as soon as you click the like button. So, you know, help drive the algorithm to let other people know that they would like to watch this video as well. Helps me a lot with the channel and uh, click subscribe if you want to see more videos and content from my channel. All right, back to the content. So this specific machine is the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus. As I said with the Intel Atoms, it does have 32 gigs of RAM in there and we have a GL set up with Plex in it. We also are running, and we'll go over here to the drives just to show the storage pool we have set up, Western Digital Reds. So these are a ZFS2 configuration. So we'll look at the status real quick. Just, you know, it's a ZFS RAID Z2 setup. And these are just the 5400 RPM, not the real fast uh, drives, just some basic NAS drives. But for video, that works perfectly fine. And we have eight drives here. Then we have a folder called Video Editing Test, which I was using in a previous video to edit videos. And since I had a bunch of videos on there, I pointed Plex at them so I don't have to worry about copyright of any other videos that you may want to watch with Plex. But because some of these videos are at 4K and uh, high res and other ones are at 1080, it gives us some uh, different variables to test with. Now, setting up Plex. Let's go over that real quick. I may able to do a, a further video in depth about it, but the short answer is you go to the available plugins, choose Plex, click install, which I already did that part. Once installed, it shows up here and you can go to the management and that opens up a new window with the uh, Plex install. But the part that people get confused about, the tricky part is how jails manage mount points. So we've already created the mount point and I'll show you how we do that. So we go here to the mount point and what they mean by source and destination. A jail sits nested within slash MNT tank IO cage jails plex root slash MNT videos where we have it mounted to and here is the video editing test folder that's under uh, slash MNT tank video editing. How do you do that? We're going to go here and edit and show it a little bit closer here. So anytime you have a jail, and this is part of the security of the jail system, it doesn't have access to data. It sits in its own jail, much like the name implies. And that jail keeps it out of being in other places. So you have to take your existing storage, and in this case, it's slash MNT tank video editing, video editing test, actually. And um, we click there as the source. We're taking all this video editing test, and we're mapping it to the inside of the jail. And we went here to MNT, and I just made a folder called video. So by selecting this, that's how we get the two different locations. Now, how does that look inside of Plex? Well, even though we see this long path because we're mapping it in here, what Plex sees is we're going to go here, and we're going to look at other videos, and we're going to edit folders, and that says MNT slash videos. So that's all you really have to do. Plex can't see further back than MNT, but when you're mapping the storage, it's MNT slash tank slash IO cage slash Plex slash root, then the MNT is being added on here. So Plex starts where MNT starts here, root slash MNT, versus this is the entire path of where everything is. It can be a little bit confusing. There's more in-depth videos I've done on how the jail system works or how to mount storage back and forth inside of there on FreeNAS. But you kind of get the idea. That's I at least wanted to cover that because people always ask about how did you get it set up. Now this is NetData, which comes built in to FreeNAS, and we're gonna be use this to see the CPU usage of the, watching the Plex videos. And we'll close this here. And here's a variety of videos I have, just kind of some miscellaneous random ones. I threw like the old video, me and Corey, we'll start from the beginning uh, when we did the wall video. So here is no problem. This is a 1080 video, actually, let me uh, turn the sound off. All right, this is a 1080 video. No problem on the playback, works perfectly fine. I can seek ahead, it's pretty much instant. 
and we can see just that's just a blip to free NAS in terms of uh, playback. And my computer is no problem handling 1080 content. Well, I should say the browser. It's not just the computer. It's when we play it back in the browser. This is a higher uh, rate 1080, so it's actually 60 frames a second, but I'm recording at 30, so it probably doesn't look any different to you. But it plays this perfectly fine. No problem. And we can go here and see this is uh, 45 megs per second at 1080 HD. And still, same thing. doesn't really affect free nat, uh, the FreeNAS Mini much. But when we go up here and let's play something at 4K content, this is where my computer will start to have a problem. Now, the FreeNAS is not doing much here. FreeNAS is barely peaking anymore, sending the content. There's always the initial seek of when it loaded the content. But you can see that the browser starts jerking a little bit. And that's because it can't handle... 4K the at the 60 meg rate that is coming in at it. And it's just a browser limitation. So it's going to go a little bit, you see it kind of jerking and not going well. So here's the test. Can the FreeNAS, can these Intel Atom processors downsample this to something that my browser can handle, like 1080 at 8 megabits? Sure. Let's give that a try. So we're converting on the fly. This was not pre-transcoded or pre-loaded. And uh, there it goes. It's going, going, going. Hit play. Give a second to buffer here. Perfectly smooth, because now it's handling it, because now it's sending it at a rate that my system can handle. Now, what does that do to the FreeNAS? Well, when you're taking 4K and sampling it down to something else, uh, that does, well, pull some CPU. So it looks like it hits the CPU. It peaked out when it started buffering, and we'll keep it playing here. Actually, we'll pop this window out and see where this is at now while it keeps playing. Get it down here. Actually, you gotta also move these windows all around. Set this to settings. Always with that means is when to refresh the charts. That way the charts keep going even when I'm not on that screen, so they'll work behind the screen. So we're still playing back nice and smooth here. And you know, we're probably keeping this at the 70%. But what if we open up another window? Will that then choke it? Is it still responsive at all while it's uh, doing this powerhouse over here, <laughs> reducing the video? Let's play another video. Actually, let's pop this out so that one stays playing. Let's we'll move it over a little bit and then we'll play something else. Let's play this one now. Start from beginning. And this one's playing now. So this one, oh, this, let me uh, rewind it so it starts over. It's not, it didn't stop, they're just getting out of the car. So we'll actually play this one over, jump backwards. It's got a buffer again because it's not saving any of the transcoding it's done. But we're stressing the machine a little bit here. So, okay, now this one's playing. Let's do this. Let's get another video playing. Plex is still responsive. It's easily loading other videos. Uh, yeah, me and Corey having some beer after work here. That was actually part of this video where we did that. So here's another video playing. So we got that video transcoding down to a lower uh, bit rate, so it's re-encoding it. This one's playing perfectly fine. And you know we're peaking out the CPU about 90%, but it's still completely responsive. So why not open another one? And let's choose a different video again. So go to other videos. Let's choose something else. What do we got here? Some some with a drill. Oh, that's a short video. Let's find a longer one. I'm not sure what Corey's doing here. There we go. Another drill video. So now we're playing one, two, three, four, and one downsampling to another rate. And I mean, we're not stressing out the FreeNAS much. Matter of fact, because this video is towards the end, the buffer's already caught up and uh, it went back down to hardly doing anything. So yes, you can not only play multiple streams. So if you had multiple devices for playback, multiple TVs in your house, one mini XL would certainly handle it. Yes, it can on the fly do the encoding, even at 4K downsampled, uh, which is not always what you're doing. Most of the time with me, I'm playing things back. If I have something natively 4K and I do have a 4K TV at home, 
It'll just play it back natively on there. Or in some cases, even though you have 4K content, the device itself will just downsample it depending on what your playback device is uh, to another rate. But the point really is these Atom processors, despite not being particularly fast processors, obviously they're working perfectly fine. So we're able to see all of this going out. Actually, I hear the motorcycle in the background um, start closing all these windows. All the stuff I got open. Yeah, this is playing perfectly. Anything that's not being transcoded still plays perfectly fine or re-encoded, I should say. So that's all working perfectly fine. And we didn't completely stress this machine out. We had a couple peaks uh, when we pulled all of that, but clearly you can run all these streams all at once on this system and ooh, CPU temperature. Did we did we raise the CPU temperature a little bit? Nah, not enough, not even enough to be significant. <laughs> we did see a little bit of load over here uh, on these charts. Here's the CPU temperature. So we went from, before I started this video, uh, 34, we hit 39 and it's cooling right back off uh, there. So not even, not even in any type of danger zone going from 34 to 39 degrees centigrade. That's that's really nothing for these processors. They can generally get a lot hotter, you know, that you want them to uh, without without any real problem. So at least this gives you an idea though, though yes, it can handle it. Yes, it works well. Uh, not any problems with it. Real world testing, not some benchmarks that tell you that, well, that processor is slow, it'll never do it. It comes down to, you know, all the different instruction sets on a chipset, the optimization of the software, um, you know, whether or not it's good for that CPU. And these Intel CPUs don't have any problems uh, handling the media codecs that Plex uses to do the encoding. And that's all I want to do is kind of prove that point that yes, it'll work fine inside of here so if you're considering this box it's still a good purchase thanks thanks for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and maybe youtube will send you a notice when we post if you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business it services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.